righty. Hi, everybody. It is a pleasure to be here. I apologize for the, um, I apologize for the, uh, for the, for the hiccup in the, um, in getting started on time. It's, it's only appropriate. It is only appropriate that if uh, one of the virtual panels and to our talks gets, uh, gets a hiccup, it's got to be the one on what we're actually doing today, which is all about streaming. <laughs> and, uh, and I am your host. I am T. Morris. It is a pleasure to, um, uh, to talk with you all today. I just want to go on ahead and, <clears throat> and say very quickly that uh, as far as Q&A, I will uh, I'll be queuing you all on when we have Q&A. Just remember that if you have questions, feel free to go on ahead and use the Q&A feature be built into Zoom. And I'll be uh, taking all of your questions uh, at the, uh, near the end of the presentation. I'm also going to probably be picking up the pace of the presentation just to make sure that I remain on time and on schedule with Baltic Con because I do not want to necessarily, uh, I do not necessarily want to have them uh, fall behind on account of me. So I'm going to uh, go on ahead and uh, quickly share one of my, uh, share my screen so that you all can see what's going on there. And apparently I cannot, but uh, let me go on ahead and get back here. Yeah. If there's anything, if, if, it's, if anything should go wrong, it should be, it should be the streaming panel. Why not? Okay, so first off, let's go on ahead and let's do this old school. I'm going to go on ahead and just share my screen, not worry about, uh, um, not worry at all about the uh, about the the actual presentation I was going to put on. I'll just go on ahead and share my screen and keep it simple that way. All right, let's go on ahead and let's do that. All right, you should be able to you should be able to see my screen. Yes, you can see my screen now. Fantastic. Um, and so what it is, is we're going to go on ahead and just do it old school, no animation. I'll just go on ahead and uh, talk you through it. What are, so this is a panel about streaming content, what we're doing right now. And um, when we talk about streaming content, when you, when you mention you're a streamer, automatically video games come to mind. And that is not unusual. Uh, video games are still, it's still the most, uh, the, the most streamed of all content that's out there right now. But streaming has evolved. It's a lot like podcasting. And uh, we are now in, a, in an age, especially now with COVID-19, where people are, are content hungry and they want to see, they, they want content. Because sooner or later, we're going to burn through um, all, these, uh, all these DVDs we have in our libraries. We're going to burn through everything that's sitting on Netflix. And people want to have something different. They want to have some type of variety. They also want to have human contact. So because of that, we're, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about if you want to stream content, what are your options and what, what, what do you do? So first off, what is streaming? It's, it's, it is a basic question, simple question, and we're going to go on ahead and we're going to, we're going to tackle that right now. So first off, with streaming, we're going to go from left to right. Uh, streaming can happen with a laptop or your phone. And a webcam now, because of the way uh, laptops are created, uh, webcams are optional. So you do not necessarily have to worry about, uh, about having a webcam on your, uh, on your laptop if you, if you want, uh, if you want a, a camera or not. And the beautiful thing is that if you want to stream the webcam, even if you have a webcam built into your, to your PC or you built, built into your Mac laptop, you do not need the webcam. It is not uh, an essential. If you want to stream without your face being shown and just your audio, you can do that as well. And you can do presentations like what I'm doing right here. But uh, starting off, if you've got a laptop, if you've got a desktop computer and you've got a webcam, you can, you can stream. If you've got uh, a phone with a, with a working camera, you can stream. So that's your starting point. Then you got to go in ahead and you got to sign up for a platform or you've got to sign up for, uh, well, you have to sign up for a platform and you have to download streaming software. And now there is, uh, there, there is uh, streaming software includes everything from something open source to a paid service. Uh, the open source one you see above it, that's OBS. Underneath that, you'll see the, the green icon. That is, uh, that is Streamlabs. Above that, you'll see a purple icon. That's the icon for Twitch. Twitch is one of the streaming platforms that you can actually register yourself. That is free. It doesn't cost you a thing. You sign up for that. And that is where your stream is hosted. The streaming software makes the stream happen. It, it is the bridge between you and your streaming platform. And once you've got everything talking to, to, your, uh, to, your, to your streaming platform and to your, to your software, 
you go live and you go live on a global scale. It is very much like podcasting. It's very much like podcasting, only instead of time shifting, you are going live. Now, the streaming platforms that are available, here they are break, bro bro broken down to the big five. There are plenty of other uh, streaming platforms. Some of them are being bought up by the big five, but you have a variety of different places you can stream from. Let me just go ahead and quickly break it down for you. Uh, Twitch, the very top of the list at twitch.tv, they are the biggest uh, of the software platforms that are out there, uh, for, sorry, that are streaming platforms that are out there. And uh, Twitch was the first. They started off as something called uh, Justin TV. And Twitch was sort of the offshoot of Justin TV because there was an area of, of Justin TV, and this is back in 2011, 2012, where it was just video games. It was just video games and it was all video games all the time. And what, um, what happened was that they broke off on their own all the, because the video games was getting, the video game section was getting a lot of traffic. And they said, well, we should break that off and make it its own service. And they came up with Twitch. Well, Twitch is kind of going back to that. And now along with video games, they have, uh, they have chat rooms, they have crafting rooms, they have all these different directories that are very hyper-focused. So Twitch still remains the biggest player online. However, their biggest competitor are these, uh, these next two, YouTube and Facebook Live. So let's start with YouTube. YouTube uh, is, is more known for being a, a place where you put your videos that are all done and you just go up there. And if you want, you check the comments and you respond if you need to. I know, rule of the internet, don't ever check the comments. But YouTube recently went on ahead and uh, created a live aspect to their, um, to their service. And they've gone, they've gone one step further and they've, uh, they've created, uh, sub, they have created different, different sub levels, different ways of interacting with the host as they are streaming. Basically, YouTube has become a Google powered version of Twitch. And right behind them is Facebook Live. They are the uh, 800 pound gorilla of social media. And with Facebook Live, it has just gotten bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger to a point now where you have Facebook Live as well as Facebook Gaming. And um, Facebook, pretty much you're streaming when you do a Facebook Live. A lot of people don't consider that streaming. They just consider it a live video where they're just chatting with people. Well, you can do that on Twitch and you can do that on YouTube. So Facebook Live is just yet another extension. It is yet another, another platform that you can utilize. And the big appeal of Facebook is that it's a one-stop shop. You can now go to Facebook and get everything without leaving. You can get your, you can get your updates, you can get your, your photograph fix, and you can go on ahead and do your stories as you would on Instagram. And you can even go on ahead and now stream from Facebook if you want to. Um, the other two, I point out because they are still big players in the streaming, in the streaming game, Mixer. Now you might've heard Mixer if you did hear about Ninja, um, United States ranked, ranked by ESPN as United States best gamer. And um, it was a big to do when Ninja left Twitch to go to Mixer exclusively. And he's still there. He's still a Mixer and he's, he's still doing what he's doing. And Mixer, part of the appeal of Mixer is that it's powered by Microsoft. So uh, Microsoft got into the game with, with their own platform, Mixer.com. And uh, there was a migration from Twitch to Mixer. And you'll see, you'll see a lot of people who once built their followings on Twitch, they are now on Mixer. Um, Mixer is still a major player in, in the streaming platform game. And um, if you are looking for a, a, um, a more focused platform, a platform where you are able to um, be a little more personable, maybe Mixer is your thing. And then finally, there's Periscope. Now, you may remember Periscope from the early days before Facebook Live. And I do say early days as in like 2012, 2013. Um, that's in internet terms, track with me. So with Periscope, also known as Twitter Live, Twitter developed Periscope, launched it, and Periscope now seamlessly integrates with Twitter. When people stream from Periscope, they are streaming basically via Twitter. But you can use the Periscope standalone app if you still want to. 
And Periscope was actually making uh, mobile streaming a thing. Periscope uh, and Twitter, they were doing mobile streaming before Twitch, YouTube, and Facebook ever even thought about doing this. And then Facebook created Facebook Live, and then YouTube and Twitch, and, and eventually Mixer, they all had to play catch up. So Periscope was one of the first, and they are still one of the more influential uh, platforms. But these are your big five to choose from. And what I would say to people is, if you want to give streaming, like streaming to a wider audience, if you want to give that a shot, I would say start simple. Start with Periscope or Mixer first. And then eventually work up to try, trying to do a Facebook Live or a YouTube or Twitch. And you'll see that a lot of the, a lot of the larger uh, organizations, uh, just this past week, I was working with Logitech D G to celebrate Global Accessibility Awareness Day. And... Um, they were, simul, they were simul streaming across Twitch, YouTube, and Facebook. So this, you know, for larger corporations, larger audiences, you're going to go to those big three. But if you want to start off and just give it, a, give it a try, see what it's like, I always say start small, work your way up. So next, the next big question is what do I need to stream? And again, you're going to hear me draw a lot of parallels between Facebook and oh, sorry, Facebook, sorry. You're going, to, you're going to see me draw a lot of parallels between, um, between podcasting and streaming. Because a lot of stuff that I hear in the streaming, in the streaming community, I'm hearing that. Um, I've heard it all before. I heard it before 10 years ago when I was, uh, working, with, uh, when I was working with uh, early podcasters. Uh, the, you know, the talk of the community, how we're all out there for each other. And it's, it's true. It's very true. It's a, it's, a, it's a terrific community to be a part of. But... Um, one of the things that you hear from a lot of streamers when they say, well, when you're starting off, you don't have to go big straight away. You can start simply. So here's an example. When I started streaming in September of 2017, this was my setup. What you're, what you're not seeing is the uh, monitor or the actually flat screen television that I was gaming off of. You can't see the controller in there. I started with a PS4 and a gaming headset. And Eventually, I worked up into getting the PSI, which was the proprietary camera specifically for the PS4. That was my entire streaming setup back in the day. That day being September 2017. It hasn't even been three years. It has not even been three years, but this is where it all starts. Eventually, this is what your, 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 your setup can look like. Um, GamerCat is optional. In fact, he's right here in front of me and he's wanting to make sure that I mention him in this presentation about, uh, about streaming content. But you'll notice that I'm now not streaming specifically off of a uh, console. I am streaming off of, uh, off of a PC. The console is actually plugged into my PC. I've got the gaming monitor in front of me to the left. To the right, I have, uh, I have, I have a, a, a referral, what I call the referral uh, monitor. That is where I'm doing, um, that is where I'm, I'm checking uh, web links, checking the status of the, uh, of the stream. And if you'll notice in, the, uh, in the, the photograph that is off to the left, you'll notice that I have a third monitor suspended. It's mainly because I've run out of disk, desk space. I have no more desk space. Even if I was to tell GamerCat to shove off, I, I needed to have a third monitor. And that third monitor is specifically chat dedicated. Instead of having to look away from the game, I can now glance up and I can see what's happening in my chat. And that's a recent, that, that is a recent uh, update as of, as of, uh, as of this, um, this week. I just had got everything working this week. Now, as a quick reminder, well, I'll be doing Q&A near the end of this presentation. So if you're getting your questions in there, go on ahead and feel free to uh, pop it in there. That'd be great. Oh, I can run over if I need to. Oh, that th thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> and Viv is in chat. Hey, Viv, how are you? Good to see you, Viv. Good to see you. Thank you for being here. I really do appreciate it. So, um, so again, uh, going back to uh, the, the setup, you do not have to mimic this setup. I will say having the third monitor suspended over my gaming monitor, it's pretty balling. But you do not necessarily have to have your, have to have your, your streaming set up like this. It makes it very easy for me. 
Now I know that some people, uh, what, what I've seen of the chat slash third monitor solution, what they do is they will take their iPad and they will, um, they will actually prop up the iPad in front of their, uh, their, their, their gaming monitor or their secondary monitor. And that is an option as well. Each setup should cater to your needs and should cater to what it is you want to accomplish. But let's just break down some of the, um, let's go ahead and let's break down some of the other things that we got here. For example, uh, what do you need to stream? You need a desktop or laptop computer or a smartphone. You need that and that'll make it happen. Um, the webcam, optional. The gaming console is also optional. Um, you, can, you can stream <clears throat> from a PC if you want to and then uh, run PC games. Now, the trick about that, the trick about using the same PC for streaming and for your, um, and for your gaming is that you're going to be asking a lot from your computer. So either you need a really hepped up computer to do both, both gaming and streaming from, or you need a gaming machine and a streaming machine. It is still possible. <clears throat> I tend to stream, um, I tend to stream both my, uh, both my PC uh, gaming as well as my stream from the same, from the same machine. And it can handle it. It can handle it, but you are going to encounter some, some gameplay issues uh, the longer you stream because there's a lot of data that's happening. Of course you need streaming software. That is an essential streaming software is OBS streaming software is Streamlabs. That is the, that is the stuff that makes the connection between you and the platform and then finally to your worldwide audience. The other thing you're going to need is plenty of bandwidth, particularly for uploading speed. And what this means is, is you can't really stream uh, adequately. And I'm gonna use big quotes around the words adequately, but you can't stream adequately on a basic uh, discount economic internet plan you need to talk to your internet service provider and see what plans they offer. And you have to say, well, I'm streaming and I would like to go on ahead and I would like to, to ramp up my, um, my plan so that I can handle that kind of bandwidth. And the bandwidth is not necessarily for downloading. It's for uploading. Because remember, you're sending out a signal. When you stream content, when you stream content, you basically turn your, your studio into, well, your office, your office or your studio, whatever, whatever you call it, you turn it into a broadcasting studio. And a lot of the basics of broadcasting of, you know, input sources, camera A, camera B, camera C, all that stuff comes into play when you start streaming. It sounds complicated, but don't worry. I can recommend a fantastic book for you to uh, take a look at. Uh, how much upload rate? Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get to that question uh, a little later. Uh, again, uh, Charles, I'm going to go on ahead and uh, take questions at the Q&A section. Coming up on it, don't worry. Um, but, I, but if you do have questions about streaming, that's a great place to start. Is, uh, is, is Twitch for dummies? Yes, I wrote it. Thank you. Okay, let's move on. Um, along with all the stuff that I've been talking about. Thank you, Deb. <laughs> ding. And now the dings start. Yes, you all know me from my podcast. Yes, yes, yes. So... Apart from, apart from all of these, uh, all of these things that you need, what's the other thing you need? You need time. You need time to make sure that you are going to go on ahead and you're going to do all this. And it's not just time to stream. It's also time to set up, time to break down, time to uh, create uh, things like highlight reels if you want to go on ahead and do something like that. If you don't have time, it's, it's very much like podcasting ramped up to the next level. As a matter of fact, I have found uh, that streaming and podcasting work so, um, uh, so well together. They're, they're, they're so simpatico with one another that uh, we have, uh, we being me and, Ch and Chuck Tomasi, uh, for the fourth edition of Podcasting for Dummies, we are basically taking out the video podcasting chapter and putting in its place uh, a, a chapter dedicated solely to streaming so that you can see where it fits in to the podcasting workflow. And Chuck, he's doing the same thing that I'm doing. I'm 
uh, streaming all of our podcasts now. Uh, myself, I'm doing Happy Hour from the Tower, which is a Destiny podcast. And I'm still doing the Shared Desk with Pip Valentine. And we stream all of our recordings. And from there, we take the recordings and then we turn them into podcasts. And I'm doing that on Twitch TV. Chuck is doing that with Technorama. But with Technorama, they're on Facebook Live. So you can catch all of our podcasts now live and then hear them edited down and polished and ready to go um, in, uh, in, in, if you subscribe to the podcast. So there are lots of different ways you can consume your content. But very similar to podcasting. When people ask me, well, I don't game, so what can I stream? Pretty much anything you want in the universe. This is, a, this is not a new platform, but it may be new to you. And what's important is to remember that you have a voice and you have a passion. And from that, from that, you can go on ahead and you can, uh, you can really stream anything you want. Just yesterday, I was doing a cooking stream. I was making fresh salsa verde from my latest jam, which is the cookbook Trejos Tacos, written by Machete himself, Danny freaking Trejo. Yes, Danny Trejo has a cookbook. It is available on Amazon. You can look it up. It is called Trejos Tacos. And last night we ate very well at Casa de Morris. Very, very well. So um, yeah, I streamed that. I streamed the process of working with the materials and uh, you know using ancho chili paste instead of uh, jalapeno because I'm a wuss. I mean, there's there's a lot of different things you can stream, and and it doesn't all have to be about video games. So, a few tips from a semi-pro streamer: um, you want to find something you are passionate about when you stream. If it's gaming, find a game you are passionate about. Good example. Uh, just recently, I finished Bioshock Infinite, which was a, a video game that I have loved for years, that entire series I've loved for years, and yet I never beat Bioshock Infinite. But I want, I'm so passionate about this that I said, you know what, I'm going to try this game again. My skills have gotten a little better. I'm going to go on ahead and I'm going to do this. And it was so much fun. It was, it was a little stressful, but it was a lot of fun. Um, when I, when I stream my podcasts, it's something I'm passionate about when I'm streaming about cooking, it's something I'm passionate about. So whatever it is, you know, when, whenever you're, you're doing it, if you, if you decide, well, I'm going to go ahead and stream and I'm going to stream Valorant or I'm going to stream Fortnite or I'm going to stream League of Legends because they're popular. Okay. That is a choice and you can do that. There's nothing wrong with that, but be warned that you're going to be competing with a lot of more, a lot of other people. And there are some people that truly do seek out specific games, not because they're popular, but because they have a passion for them as well. So find something you're passionate about the stream. Then be like Jean-Luc, engage, 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 engage. It is very easy to lose yourself into a game. Very easy to lose yourself into a game. But if you go five, 10, 15 minutes without talking to somebody, that could get problematic for you. That could get problematic for you. So be like John Luke, engage your chat. And also keep an eye on your chat, whether it's with, uh, whether it's with an iPad, whether it's with, um, whether it's with your suspended uh, monitor, whether it is with uh, your phone. Keep an eye on chat. If people are asking you questions, make sure you engage with them. Make sure you check with them. And then don't worry about the analytics ever. And if you were to ask me, what is the biggest challenge? What is the biggest challenge of streaming? That's it. That is the biggest challenge of streaming is, um, is dealing with the analytics because uh, Twitch and Mixer and Facebook put it all in front of you. They tell you how many people you have. They tell me right now in, um, they tell me right now in Zoom that I have, uh, I have seven people watching me right now. So, you know, I am, I know for a fact, I do not have 70 or 700 or 7,000 people watching me. I have seven. That's it. And you know what? That's fine. Because when I stream, it's the same way I podcast. I am not going to necessarily worry about the analytics. 
I don't care if it's seven, 70 or 7,000 people watching me. I'm going to give it 150% because that is the way I work. And that is the way you should work. And if you think, well, nobody's really watching me. Everybody starts somewhere. Everybody starts somewhere. Even Ninja, even Dr. Lupo. They all start from the same place. And uh, no, I get it. I do. I do get it. I, th there are people watching on Twitch and that's fine. That's cool. <laughs> that is, that is more than okay. But what I'm saying is, is that what I mean by analytics is that is, that is what I'm talking about is that the analytics are, uh, you know, are not necessarily hundred percent accurate. I had this week, for example, and I was, when I was uh, streaming with Logitech G, I had roughly 10 to 15 people watching me during the entire stream. But I did not see the analytics from Facebook. I did not see the analytics from Twitch. I did not see the analytics from, uh, from uh, YouTube. All I saw were my own analytics. So, you know, just remember, it, it isn't about the numbers. It isn't about the ratings. It is about the content you're producing and whether or not you're digging it. Because if you're not digging it, nobody's digging it. And that's the last thing. Remember that you are live. Please, please, please remember you're live. And I say that because of what happened right before I, right before I got, um, right before I came on the stream. So I was watching, uh, I was watching uh, a, a streamer and I'm not really sure if he was, um, I'm not sure what his game was. It was interesting to say the least. It was interesting because, um, I was watching him and he, he at one point that did this, he just put his hand on his, put his hand on his cheek and he, he just, this was how he was gaming. He just went on ahead and he stayed like this. And I was watching just out of, out of pure fascination. He didn't, he was talking to people, but this is how he was doing it. That is not the way to stream. That is not the way to stream. When you stream, you're going to go on ahead and you're going to, you're going to, you're going to have good posture. You're going to go on ahead and you're going to, um, you're going to sit up straight. You're, go you're going to do the tiny little things that you need to do to make sure that yes, people are, um, uh, people are paying attention and people are, are, uh, they're, they're watching you. You are live. Now that is the other, that is the other challenge I think of streaming. And that's another challenge I think that is, that is worth, um, uh, worth, worth addressing. I remember when I gave, when I gave a similar presentation like this, somebody asked me, well, <clears throat> I want to be able to engage my, my chat. I want to be able to engage people, <clears throat> excuse me, in chat, but I also want to be able to be really good at the game. So that's my big question. What, you know, how do I do that? How am I, how am I good at the game, but how am I also, um, how am I also able to keep, keep an eye on my chat? And I was, I was brutally honest with, with, that, with that individual. I said, welcome to Twitch. Welcome to Twitch. You have to make sure, um, uh, it, 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 yeah, and I, I get that. I do get that, Alan. I do get that. There was, there was, a, delay, there was a delay in my start because, because, of course, if you're going to have technical difficulties, have it, on the, have it on the stream that you're, you know, have it on the one that, that you're actually doing at the time. And it's fine. It's fine. I totally get that. I'm not worried about it. Um, but there'll be other people that'll hear it and it'll be fine. But thank you, Alan. Um, as far as, uh, but, but as far as, as being good at the game and making sure you're really engaging, you have to make that decision. And you've got to, you've got to multitask your way through Twitch. It is not easy. Streaming, streaming, you, uh, and anybody who says, oh, streaming is easy. It's not. It's hard because you are truly multitasking, um, uh, to an nth degree, you need to make sure that <clears throat> that you're not only paying attention to the game, but you're also paying attention to your chat. You're also paying attention to your stream health. If you don't have the uh, if you don't have the upload, if you don't have that bandwidth, your stream is going to start to get choppy, and then you might have to decide I'm going to have to I'm going to have to restart the the PC, or I may have to uh, <clears throat> figure out after stream uh, do some troubleshooting and find out where things went wrong. There's a lot of stuff that you have to keep track of. So, so when I say, remember that you're live, try to avoid streaming like this because the guy also looked really bored. 
And if you look bored on stream, I got some bad news for you. You're not going to keep the attention of people there. You are not going to keep people's attention. Um, so right now I'd like to go on ahead and open it up for questions. I can either take questions in the chat, but there's also the Q and a, <clears throat> there's also a Q and a, um, a section here, um, in, in zoom. For those of you familiar with zoom, you're familiar with that. You can go on ahead and you can, uh, send in your Q and a questions. I can keep track of them there. I've got, uh, I've got the, uh, the, the, I've got the Q and a window open. So feel free to drop your questions in there. I know I have one already. There we go. That's what I want to see. Um, but first, I want to go ahead and address the one that was left hanging in uh, in chat. And that was from uh, Charlie Blanchard. Charlie, by the way, thanks, uh, thanks for popping in. I appreciate you being here. Um, how much upload rate do you suggest? So um, I got my upload rate to about 80, I think it was 80 megabytes per second. I believe that was what it was. It was in the, it was, it was in the eighties. I remember that. And I was very happy with that. Um, I was very happy with that. And my, my, uh, my, my upload speed ranges between 80 and 160. And that, that adequately handles it. But I do, I do pay for a, um, you're, you're going to see it happen more and more and more. Um, ISPs are now offering streamer packages and they claim to have a discount, but, but you know what you have to deal with the isp and um you also have to mind you might have to ride them a, a, a little bit as well you got to make sure that those folks are are delivering they are delivering for you you need to make sure that if any for any reason your uh your your download speed starts to take, starts to take a header you got to go ahead and do that you got to go ahead and take care of that now um to kind of put in perspective though when i when i stream I stream most of the time off of that machine over there, my, my PC, the gaming machine that you saw, you saw pictured in the, in the presentation. This is my Mac that I'm on right now. This is an 11 year old Mac and it's still chugging along. Oh, it's feeling its age. It's feeling its age, Chad, especially when I try to stream, but it can handle basic streaming. Can it handle gaming as well? No, it, it's not that level, but I can do some streams off of my laptop, which is also an older model. Um, It'll, it'll actually be, it actually is, uh, it, it may surprise you. It may surprise you just how, <laughs> it may surprise you how, um, how much power you still have left in, in five year, five year old machines or, or older. So Alan, um, Alan Rubenstein, uh, and by the way, thanks again for that, for that op, uh, observation about starting late and everything like that. I do appreciate it. Um, you say here, we can also become Robin Williams, similar to Good Morning Vietnam, takes good preparation. What are the suggestions for your prep? Okay, uh, so uh, what I recommend for, uh, for, for prepping is very similar to podcasting. Have a bullet list of stuff you want to cover. Put it on a sticky note and pop it somewhere. Uh, make sure that uh, when you sit down in front, of your, in front of your stream machine, that you're going to at least give 10 minutes 10 minutes of load in time. That's when you can play some, uh, some intro music. You can go in and play some stuff off of Spotify. Let that play for a bit at full volume. And then when you're ready to come in, you dim, you, you, you dim the music, you take it down a few notches and then you come in now real quick. It just, just, to, just to cover that <clears throat> when you're we when you're working with music, if you, cause you'll notice that a lot of streamers, they will have music playing in the background, not just uh, whatever it is they're doing, gaming what have you crafting you can have uh royalty free music you can have stuff you can have stuff playing in the background oh there we go oh, 43 folks on twitch hey twitch.tv forward slash the t monster but sorry i had to get in a plug <laughs> all right um but what what's uh what what you have to remember though about your your music is that if your music is loud the riaa um they will step in and they will say okay, you don't, have, you don't have permission to broadcast that music. And if it's loud enough, what they will do is on YouTube and they will do it on Twitch in replay, not during the stream, but in replay, they will silence the audio. So when you get your, uh, when you've got your temporary uh, video on demand, those segments will be, will be muted because of the music. Um, when you upload it to YouTube, they may flat, uh, flat out reject that uh, upload because there's copyrighted material in there. 
they may also black out those parts of your, of your video. So you'll see video, but you just won't have any audio that goes with it. So that is one of the things about, um, that is one thing you want to keep, you want to keep in mind when, when, you, when you're working with, with background music, but that is part of my show prep. I let music go for roughly 10 minutes. It gives it, first off, everybody gets the notification. They get time to go from, it's, it's like, think of it as like a virtual Balticon or any con. You have 10 minutes to get from one place to another place. And that's what you're doing. You're giving people, you know, people get notified, hey, this person's going live. And um, they know that if they wait a little longer than say 10, 15 minutes, you're already live. Now, you're going to see various streamers do various things. I've seen a lot of high-end streamers, folks like Lupo, She Snaps. Um, I've seen them do um, openings to their streams where it says stream starting soon. And I do, and I do recommend that in Twitch for Dummies and, and elsewhere that you should, should have a stream starting soon screen, you know, when you're starting, whether it's a still shot or whether it's a, an animation, you should have something that says the stream is starting soon. I have seen folks leave that stream starting soon up for anywhere from 30 minutes to even, and I'm not exaggerating one hour. To me, that's ridiculous. Now, if you have a big enough community, maybe everybody's chit-chatting in, in your chat and they're talking amongst themselves and that's fine. But when starting off, make it modest, 10, 10 minutes, 15 tops. If you've got a startup screen that is any time longer than 20 minutes, this is what I tend to tell people. Someone is going to go, I don't feel like waiting around any longer. And they're going to go someplace else. There's plenty of other streamers to choose from. Okay. Again, uh, uh, the Q and A is open, so any questions you have, feel free to feel free to send those uh, send those either in Q and A or if you are uh, if you're if you're feeling a little noobish in your in the uh, in 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 Zoom in in the Zoomosphere, go on ahead and drop something in chat. If there are any questions from Twitch that um, you want to send my way, you can go ahead and yes, please by all means cop copy them from Twitch. I would love to get your uh, your questions from Twitch. And again, for those of you who are on Twitch, if you want to find me, I'm um, twitch.tv forward slash the T monster. And that's T double E monster. And I'd be more than happy to say hey and shout out and do all that good stuff. But as far as prepping goes, along with having that 10 minute prep time, during that prep time, you should also be on uh, either a mobile device or on a, a smartphone. And you're basically telling people on Twitter, on um on Discord, on, um, on Instagram. Those are the big three platforms that I use for my publicity. I will sometimes, if I have time, I will tell people on Facebook that I'm live. But rarely will I find that my audience is on Facebook. And, and so that is, that, is, uh, that, that is one of the options you have. But you basically come up with, with a template of, of messages that are saying, hey, I'm live, feel free to join me. And then you can go on ahead and just see if, you know, the more, the, more hit, the more places you hit, the better it is. But it's the same rule of when you go on, on someone else's uh, uh, Twitch stream. Don't pimp on someone else's Twitch stream your Twitch stream. That is like the prime directive that you really do not want to violate. Uh, from Direct Relief, uh, have you thought about writing a book about you? <laughs> yeah, that's drafty, everybody. <laughs> I thought about a book. Not only have I thought about a book, Drafty, not only have I thought about a book, give me a minute here. I can go ahead and point this out to you. Um, I wrote, I've written several books on, on this experience. <laughs> I got podcasting for dummies, Twitch for dummies, Discord for dummies, which if you go to that URL, which is bit.ly bit.ly forward slash CCB, by T. CCB by T stands for Content Creators Bundle. Right now, I launched this for Balticon, uh, for, for Virtual Balticon. You can go to that URL right now, and you can order all three of these books at a 20% discount. <clears throat> it's in the, but you got to go through the Content Creators Bundle. Um, you go to that link, it will take you to the bundle. You pick that up, and I will autograph all three books for you. So, uh, so, so there you go. Uh, yes, I did write a book of my experience. And guess what? It already needs a second edition. <laughs> it already needs a second edition. Uh, 
Simply Space was one dot org out of many present, presenting to the New York government, New York City government over Teams. Yeah, uh, places like uh, yeah, there are services now like Teams, Slack, Discord. They're all getting into streaming now. You can now stream directly from Discord. Um, right, and and I think and I and I do cover that in Discord for Dummies. It is still a new service for them, and while I like it, it does tend to thin out your numbers a bit. Because you have to be on Discord to see the stream. And where you've been promoting yourself, if you're on Discord, is um, you're promoting yourself on Twitch. So then you start taking your audience away from Twitch and then all becomes, it, all, it all happens on Discord. So there's a lot of, there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of potential in, uh, in, I guess you would call it micro streaming, if you will. Um, but, uh, but yeah, um, it's something you can do on Discord. Uh, my presenter did her rehearsals with the assistant. We went after a large and prominently uh, internationally organized, uh, recognized performing arts center. They were amateur organized and ran over. We were under time. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but that sort of streaming is still very much, Charlie, it's still very much a, a new thing, even though it's been around. Um, it, it only, it only post dates podcasting by six years. And that is, that is a drop in the bucket. That is a drop in the bucket. But I still remember uh, during the second edition of Podcasting for Dummies, we were being asked, what about live podcasting, you know, on, 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 on these, these, these different platforms? I could never get those platforms to work. I could never get those platforms to work. But now Twitch, Facebook Live, uh, Mixer, YouTube, they make podcasting insanely easy. Live podcasting, I should say. And um, working, and you know, when I first set, suggested to Pip, let's live stream the shared desk, Pip was like, I'm not going to get into that. And she took to it like a fish to water. She was, she is awesome. And I'm really proud of her. She's, she, she is actually becoming a bit of a streamer in her own right. Not only do people see her on here, but then she, she joins me on my stream and we do something called Philippus Freaky Friday, where I give her the controller and she games and she, and we, and we do the original setup. We do where we were on the couch and we're just hanging out and people eat that up. It's a, it, people absolutely love it. They absolutely love it. Um, any other questions, any other questions about uh, the things that you need tips on getting started. Um, and while I'm waiting on, uh, on anything to getting, uh, get, getting copied and pasted from Twitch over to here or getting into the Q and a, uh, the Q and a section, I do think it's 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 worth uh, it's worth addressing, and I'm kind of hoping when when things calm down and TwitchCon starts up again, I would very much like to give a presentation uh, just called "Streaming to an Audience of None," because that is probably one of the toughest things to do in streaming. When you start off, you're going to have audiences of zero, and it sucks. It sucks because it's right in front of you. All the analytics are basically in front of you, and you're being told there's nobody in this room. And, um, yeah, you bet I can do that for a slow to write. <laughs> sure thing. All right. So I will go on ahead and send that. But when you are, when you're starting off, you're going to have audiences of zero. And here's the thing. It should not deter you. You should go on ahead and, uh, stream as if you have hundreds of thousands of people watching you. And it's, it's hard. It's really hard to do. Um, and it's even harder when you watch the numbers tick down, tick down, tick down, tick down. I mean, a perfect example. Today, um, I, had, I, had, I had a very lucky happenstance. I got rated by a, a, a terrific, a terrific um, um, streamer named Chevy. A, it's Chevy is, is, who, is who it was. And um, Cat, you are not going to upstage me. You are not going to upstage me. Yes, you are. Um, but A, it's Chevy. Chevy gave me a raid, a raid of over 660 people. It was an insane raid. And for that first 20 minutes or so into my stream, I was streaming to 600, 600 odd people, nearly 700 people at one point. And then I started, the, and then the numbers started to tick down. They started to tick down, started to tick down. And they don't just tick down slowly, they plummet. But you know what? It didn't matter because I had the same energy level, maybe tweaked up a little bit, 
but I was working on the same energy level that I was when I ended the stream and I had, I had, you know, uh, probably back to my regular numbers of, you know, 20. And that's fine. That's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. The, the thing about the thing about the big numbers, the thing about the big raids, um, biggest raid I've ever had happen. I've had, I've had uh, 2,500 people actually raid my channel at one point that drafty uh, over in uh, over at Twitch drafty was there for that. And for me, um, it was, it was rough. It was rough when you're at that rock star level and then you see your numbers uh, plummet down, but it's even harder when you're starting off and you see, you suddenly see yourself break into double digits. I have 11 people watching me. Holy crap. I have 11 people watching me. And then you see it tick down to five then four, two, zero. That's part of the game. It's part of the scene. And if you can't handle that, then maybe you shouldn't stream. And that's, that's, that's a cold, that is a cold, hard fact. But, that, but the truth is, you're not streaming for, for, for the passion. You're streaming for the numbers. And that is something that you, it, it's an easy trap to fall into. So when you stream and you're streaming to an audience of zero, you still got to drive it. Like you're, you're, you're streaming for an audience of 100 or 1,000. And, and you, will, you, will, you will eventually find your audience. And your audience will find you. So any other questions from, from Twitch? Any other questions from, uh, from, from the Q&A? Anything at all? I'll give it a minute. Yeah, the t oh, I, oh, I know, oh, I know the Twitch delay. I know that Twitch delay. <laughs> well, thank you, Alan. Thank you very much. <clears throat> it was good to see you too, as well, Charlie. So, um, so I'm just going to say in closing, <clears throat> uh, since it looks like we're we're winding down, uh, and I don't want to necessarily, um, I could show my streaming setup if you want. If you're doing that on Twitch TV, go go right ahead, knock yourself out. That'll be. Uh, I didn't want to. I did not want to necessarily go over for too long. I know that right now the masquerade is happening. I know that um, you know we're all trying to keep a schedule here. And um, yeah, go on ahead and uh, go go on ahead and show your own uh, your own your own streaming. Uh, your own. I, I want to take a look at this. I want to see this. The suspense. Are you feeling it, Jeff? I am. What? Why'd you come up here? Now now now, uh, gamer cats uh, acting all shy. You want to come up here? He doesn't like it when I stream from the Mac side because he doesn't have a dedicated camera. Yes, my, my, my cat actually has a dedicated gamer cat camera. And to give you an idea of how, wow. Damn, son. <laughs> Damn, son. That's a streaming setup. You done me proud, son. <laughs> and the thing is, and my my admin can 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 uh, can attest. It is a it is a it is a, a a spiral. It is a spiral downward. You think I don't need to mount a, a you know another monitor? I'll do fine with two monitors. It'll be fine. And then you just start building and building, building. And, then, and then pretty soon your office looks like Darth Vader's bathroom. It really does, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for that. I do appreciate that. Uh, for those of you who are um. Oh, very short masquerade. And you know, I got, I got to give credit. I want, I, I want to say, make sure, by the way, for everybody who's watching, uh, for those of you on Twitch watching, for those of you watching here, please make sure to email uh, Balticon. Uh, just drop them an email at, the, at, at, their, at their basic general Balticon email and let them know, let them know that, that putting this on was a real delight and that being a part of this is, is, you know, it's, it's, it's us as humans being adaptable and doing this, doing a stream on your own is tough enough, but you are organizing a masquerade. You're, you're basically doing a con and you have zero physical contact with people. So you're reliant on technology. You're reliant on email. You're reliant on zoom. You're reliant on all these things working and things will go wrong. 
when it's one person, <clears throat> you, could, you have a lot of control over it. But man, when you've got what, what's happening here tonight, it is, a, it is a show. And Balticon is killing it right now. And I just want to make sure, let Balticon know, yes, I'm making a donation. Yes, you guys are, you guys are killing it. Yes. And thank people. Thank you know thank thank you uh, admin. I know that you were you were uh, you were you were double dipping and you know it's not a con unless somebody is double dipping. That's you know so so I and and I've been there. I've been there. Raven con. I was there. I was there, man. So I know I know what everybody's going through, and the fact that that you all are are pulling this off seamlessly. All I can say is thank you, thank you very much. This has been a this. I, I'm I'm really really proud to be a part of virtual the very first virtual Balticon. And um, I think I'm going to close on, on it with a little bit of positivity and just say, this is not the new norm, but this is going to work and we're going to make it work. And then before we all know it, we're going to be back at it. We're going to be back at it, whether it's next year or the year after next, we, we will be okay. We will be okay, everybody. And if you're looking for some interaction, if you're looking for that, for that connection, if you're looking to, to just connect with new people, give streaming a shot, whether you are consuming streams or whether you are actually streaming yourself, just make sure that you reach out, that, that you, you, you meet some of the incredible people, some of the incredible people. Yeah. Even you drafty. I mean, some of the incredible people <clears throat> that you can meet um, through streaming. I have made some over the past two years coming up on three, I've made some new friends that yes, I'm the first one to say it. Streaming is a young man's game or a young person's game, or if you're non-binary, a young being's game. And I, totally, and, I, and I totally grok all of you. And the fact that this community has been so welcoming, so, so kind, and with, with the exception of Drafty, um, I mean, it has, been, it has been a delight to get to know these people. And they've been keeping me sane through this whole COVID-19 mess. <clears throat> so thank you, Balticon. This has been great. Thank you, um, thank you all so much for uh, for um, for being a part of this tonight. I'm going to go on ahead and wrap up the stream. If you have any questions for me after you take a look at the books, again, uh, I'll go on ahead and drop this uh, for all the panelists here. Give me one second. So that's the, uh, that's the link to the content creators bundle. <clears throat> Again, you pick that up 20% discount anywhere in the, uh, anywhere in the United States, $5 shipping in the, in the U S and uh, I'll sign, I'll sign all three of those books for you. And again, uh, I, I appreciate everybody uh, participating tonight. This has been an absolute blast. I will be back tomorrow afternoon. Uh, we'll be talking more about social media and I'll probably be talking about some of the stuff that I touched on here. But if you have any questions for me, feel free to swing by my stream. Uh, my stream is http twitch.tv forward slash the T monster. I primarily stream Destiny, but uh, on Monday nights, I am um, I'm streaming Predator Hunting Grounds. I'm also streaming uh, the Friday Fun Run where I stream something other than Destiny. So I'll be streaming probably, well, I'm, I'm going to keep it a secret. I'm, I'm waffling right now. I'm either going to be doing Horizon Zero Dawn, Control, um, Marvel Spider-Man, or we may go even further back and do Batman Arkham Asylum. I haven't decided which. I haven't decided which, but we'll see what, we'll, we'll, we'll see what happens for this Friday. Thank you all very much. Enjoy the rest of Virtual Balticon. And for those of you who are showing up tomorrow, I'll see you then. Take care.